This is Palm Sunday. I know there are a lot of, in fact, across the world today, pastors, preachers who will be preaching on the triumphal entry of Christ into Jerusalem. And I do not want to miss my opportunity. He, they will be talking about how Jesus came in praise and in pageantry. And uh, I want our opportunity today to talk about that. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we come into your house, we come into your presence. Lord, we've lifted your name in song. We lifted your name, Lord, in recognition of your lordship and of your deity. You are God and God alone. We've lifted your name, Lord, in, in worth. We value you, Lord God, above all else. We acknowledge you as King and Lord and God. Now, Lord, I ask for your anointing this morning. I pray that you'll speak, Father, through me. I ask, God, as I've sought you for this word. And Lord, uh, we have prayed. God, we have looked to you. Now, Lord, as we lift your name to magnify your name, I pray, God, that you'll anoint, that your name may be exalted. God, I pray that this word would find its place in the hearts of your people and that your will will be done in this hour. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The people shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna to the king. The people shouted, Hosanna. The word Hosanna comes from the Hebrew word Hoshiana. Hoshiana. And it means save now or save us now. Save now. Uh, this word we find in Psalm 118 and verse 25. And if you'd like to turn to Psalm 118, I will be using not the entire psalm, although I will make reference to it. Psalm 118. And this word, Hoshiana, is found in verse 25. Save now, Hosanna. I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Hosanna. I want to take a closer look at this Psalm 118 um, as, uh, at this time, as this Psalm was, um, as we enter the Passion Week. This Psalm 118 is part of what is called the Hallel. If you're not familiar with the word Hallel in Hebrew, Hallel is the root word of Hallelujah. Hallel means to praise. Hallelujah is to praise the Lord or praise you the Lord. This word Hallel means praise. And the Hallel is these Psalms 113 through 118. The Hallel is sung, was sung and is sung at all of the major feasts, all of the major Jewish celebrations. Whenever the Jews get together to celebrate anything, they'll sing from the Hallel, the words of praise, 113, Psalm 113 to 118. Psalm 118 is the psalm that they would sing on Passover. Every Passover, Psalm 118 was being sung. If you remember when Jesus was in the uh, upper room, when he was in the, uh, the room with his, his disciples on the Last Supper, and it says that he, um, that he sang a psalm, that the, 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 the disciples sang a psalm. Uh, psalm 118, the Hallel, was sung at the time of the Passover. And it's believed that Jesus sang this psalm with his disciples from the, uh, from the, upper, from the uh, Last Supper going into the uh, Garden of Gethsemane. It's a song that was sung on the time um, when Jesus is now entering Jerusalem. He's coming, as all the people are coming, they're coming into the presence of God, into Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Are you with me? Right, so everybody's coming from all around, from the Galilee. They're, they're coming to celebrate in Jerusalem this special time of the Passover. And they're singing this psalm, Hosanna. And, and they came out now to meet their king. Um, this, uh, let's look at Psalm 118, verses 22 through 29. This is part of the psalm that was sung in this festival. The stone which the builders ref, uh, refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. 
Save now, Hosanna. I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord which hath showed us light behind this sacrifice. Um, bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. O God, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. This is what they would have been singing as they came from the areas around, coming into Jerusalem, this great festivity to celebrate Passover. Hosanna! Hosanna to the king. What they're singing is and, and shouting is, save us. Now they were acknowledging the Messiahship of Christ. As they came from all around, they would have been coming to the Passover feast anyway, but now they're coming with Jesus, and Jesus is riding in into Jerusalem in this triumphal entry, and the people are shouting to him, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. All four gospel writers talk about this entrance into Jerusalem, and a couple of them use the reference, uh, Hosanna to the, king, to the son of David. That term, son of David, is clearly Messiahship. They were acknowledging him as the Messiah, as the king that was, uh, that was prophesied to come and to sit on the throne in Jerusalem and to rule over all of Israel. Hosanna to the king. They're acknowledging Jesus as the Messiah, but they just didn't understand what it meant. They had no idea what they were saying. See, let me say, and Brother Ray, I appreciate what you said this morning about worship. Jesus came to be worshipped. Now understand this, we know that he came to save. We understand that. He came to live, he came to die, he came to rise again and to ascend unto heaven and to make intercession. He came to redeem mankind, but primarily he came to be worshipped. He came to be glorified, to be honored as Lord. That's why he came. When conquerors would uh, go out, when they would prepare to go to battle, or when they came back victorious from battle, the people would line the streets in pageantry, in parade, and they would shout and celebrate to the conqueror, to the mighty one, to the general or to the king who was going off to battle or who had just come back in battle. They would shout his name and they would sing praise to the one, to the conqueror. Zechariah the prophet foretold this coming of Jesus in Zechariah chapter 9. Listen to what he says. He said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just in having salvation. Hosanna. Lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Jesus came riding in on a borrowed colt, just as Zechariah had prophesied. And Zechariah said he would come, he would be your king, he would ride into Jerusalem, and the people would acknowledge that he was the Savior. See, friends, the people came, uh, uh, the people had come to receive their king. And they threw palm leaves on the ground, why, why we call it Palm Sunday because the people would gather and they pulled off the palm leaves and they laid them down, the, the palm branches in the street. They took off their outer garments, their robes, and they laid them in the street as the king came riding in. This was the red carpet treatment, as it were, to honor him as king. And, they, and so they laid the palms and they laid the garments at his feet and they shouted, Hosanna! Save us! Now that word, Hosanna, or Hoshiana, originally was a request. Originally, when they said Hosanna, it was, God, save us. Please save us. It was, a, it was a request. It was a prayer. We need to be saved. But it morphed over the years into a phrase, a word of praise. Now the word Hosanna, as they shouted it to the king, was not a request. Please save us. We, we acknowledge you uh, as one who is coming to save us because we need to be saved. It now became a word of praise. It became similar to uh, God save the king or hail to the king. Are you follow me? 
It was a word of honor. It was a word of praise. It was a word of recognition to, to kingship. God, save the king. Hail to the king. Hosanna. Those who came with him from Galilee were familiar with his miracles. John tells us in the gospel, chapter 12, that they had been familiar with his raising of Lazarus from the dead. So those that, were came, that came from the Galilee, they, they came from, uh, from the areas in which he had done so many of his miracles. They were familiar with his miracles. They had either seen it firsthand or they had heard about all the miracles Jesus was performing. If you remember correctly, Jesus spent most of his time in Capernaum. He was uh, where Peter was born and, uh, and lived. And, and he stayed often in Peter's house. And Jesus, in the early times of his ministry, when he went to Capernaum, he found Peter's mother-in-law sick with a fever. And he healed her in Peter's house. The, the word was noised abroad that, that Jesus was, was able to heal. We see in Capernaum all the miracles that took place, the opening of blinded eyes, the list here, just a few. The demoniac who was healed and delivered in the synagogue. The centurion's servant was healed in Capernaum. Jairus' daughter, you're familiar with Jairus, and his daughter was healed in Capernaum. Many other miracles were done in Capernaum, many others. And in all the areas surrounding in the Galilee where Jesus performed, he traveled we read of the widow's son, the widow of Nain, whose Jesus met them on the way to the funeral. Here, here is this woman, she, her, her only son is dead. In a, in a Western society, that doesn't mean as much as it did then, but this was, she is now without any support whatsoever. She is completely alone. Her only son is dead. She has no husband. There's no social security. There's no, uh, she's alone. Jesus is moved with compassion and he stops the funeral pyre. He, he touches and raises the young man uh, and restores him to life. This, this was known throughout the Galilee. Jesus did many miracles in Chorazin and Bethsaida. In fact, in, in Matthew, he rebuked the cities. If you remember, he said, oh, Chorazin and, and, uh, and Bethsaida, and he mentions Capernaum. If the miracles that were done in you had been done in Sire, uh, Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes. And, and, he, and Jesus said, it will be more tolerable for them in judgment than in you. Why? Because of all the miracles that were performed. You, they, they had seen Jesus raise the dead. They had seen him open blinded eyes. All the miracles that had been performed in the Galilee. And all of these people who had known him as a miracle worker, they're coming with him to, uh, on the way to the Passover feast in Jerusalem. They're, and they're, they acknowledge, they know that he is a miracle worker. They get to Jerusalem, the Bible says that others came out from the city. Those in Jerusalem were less familiar with who Jesus was. They may have heard of him, they may have been somewhat familiar, but they didn't see all the miracles that Jesus had performed. They didn't understand who he was. Listen, Matthew 21, 10. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? So all the people that came with him from the Galilee, they're shouting Hosanna because they know he's a miracle worker. Those that are coming in Jerusalem, they're not quite familiar, but he's coming as the king. And so they're shouting Hosanna as well. And, and they're all stirred. Everyone came. Friends, the, they were stirred by the stirring. Are you still with me? Amen. That's how a crowd works. A crowd draws a crowd. We don't know all that's, we don't know who this man is, but, but there's a crowd that's gathering. They're all, and the whole city is in an uproar. The whole city now is stirred because the king is coming and they're shouting Hosanna. Point is, friends, they, some saw him. They, everyone came for something. Everyone was there with Jesus for something. Some came and saw him as a miracle worker. We had heard about him, the miracles that he performed. We, we had heard how he opened the blinded eyes. We heard how he raised the dead. And we heard all these wonderful things. Maybe, maybe he'll do something for me. Maybe as I come into Jerusalem with this miracle worker, maybe he'll, maybe he'll heal my body. Maybe he'll touch my son or my daughter. Maybe he'll deliver uh, me from my problems or... They, they came because, because he was a miracle worker. Maybe he'll do something for me. 
Others saw him as a political figure, a pe political revolutionist, uh, one who is coming now perhaps to overthrow Roman tyranny. Remember, we had heard it was prophesied that the king would come and that he would take his place on the throne in Jerusalem. And the son of David, the Messiah, here he is. Maybe now this is our freedom. Maybe now Rome will leave us alone. We have a king finally who could kick Herod, uh, that rat, out of, out of office and take over. And, and maybe we could finally have victory. They saw him as a miracle worker. They saw him as a political figure. But they all came for something. They all came that they might receive from him. And they were even willing to pay him homage. They were even willing to shout Hosanna. They were even willing to give him praise. Half of them didn't know who he was. The others, friends, uh, listen, nothing has changed in that respect. Everyone comes for something. Everyone came for something, and, and, and it, it, little has changed through the years. The crowd wants a standby God. You know what I mean by that? The crowd wants a God who's on call, who's at standby. When, uh, he's the one who's going to fulfill my dreams. He's the one who's going to give me things. He's the one who's going to fix my problems when I have problems. And so they came, and very little has changed. The crowd still wants a standby God, an on-call God. And if I need a miracle, I'll call upon him, and uh, I want him to be there to come in and bail me out, to rescue me, to help me, to solve my problem. And the crowd, very little has changed. The crowd still j just wants him to be, to stand by, and, and they're even willing to acknowledge him and give him homage to some degree. Listen, friends, the, the, the same, nothing has really changed. What's in it for me is the cry of the crowd. Are you still with me? Amen. What's in it for me? Is, what, is, is, the, is the modern attitude, uh, uh, whether it's spoken or not. What do I get out of it? What benefit is there in it for me? What do, what do I get if I follow this king? If I acknowledge Jesus, if I call him Lord, what, what do I get? What do I get out of this whole religious experience? What do I get out of this whole church thing? What's in it for me? Very little has changed, friends. But when it comes to personal surrender... It's a completely different story. Hear me. Am, it, am, I, am I too loud? No. no. When it comes to personal surrender, when it comes to acknowledging his lordship and calling him and, and, and realizing that he is king, acknowledging him as lord of all and worthy of every part of our lives, it's a completely different story. Oh, Hosanna! A miracle worker. Oh, Hosanna, political leader. We'll even shout your name. When it comes to surrendering one's life completely and absolutely and laying it all at his feet, it's a, it's a different story entirely. The, sti the city was stirred, saying, who is this? Listen, friends, if you have come here this morning and you have not come to worship God with all of your heart, hear me. If you have not come to worship him with everything you have, every aspect of your life, every moment of your life, every dime in your checkbook, every, every talent you have, if you have not come to acknowledge him as Lord of your complete and absolute life, then you don't know who he is. You don't know him. If you've come here this morning and you are not willing to lay everything on the altar and say, my God, you are my all. My life belongs to you in its entirety. You don't know him. Amen. And I don't care how long you've professed Christianity. I don't care if you're a member of this church. I don't care who you are, how long you've been in the way. If you have not surrendered your everything to him, you don't know who he is. You might shout Hosanna, but if you haven't given him your entire life and said, God, I will live for you, my life is in your hands, you don't know him. You can't know him. You don't. Listen, the Pharisees tried to silence the crowd. 
Here they come. What is all this noise? Could you imagine the Pharisees? This religious bunch? What is this noise coming up the road? We know there's celebration at, fair, at, at, at uh, Passover, but we've never heard anything like this. Who is this man? What is this, what is this ruckus? Teacher, rabbi, quiet down your disciples. Make them stop. All of this, <laughs> think about this. The Passover feast, this great time of celebration, they're celebrating too much. There's too much praise, go, there's too much shouting going on. That we don't have, we don't do that in this city. We don't allow that kind of, a kind of exuberance. Quiet down your disciples. Make them stop. What does Jesus say? Jesus says to the Pharisees, listen. <laughs> if, uh, if, they should, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. If my disciples, if those who are following me, even though they don't, clearly understand me, but if the people stop praising me, if the people stop worshiping me, then the rocks are going to start crying out, Hosanna, because that's who he is. And he's going to be praised, and he's going to be worshipped, whether it's by us or by the stones, or God is going to be praised. That's who he is, and that's what he came for. Friends, he will be praised and he will be worshipped. Paul says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Bible says there's a day when every single person who's ever lived is going to bow their knee and call Jesus Lord to the glory of God. Now that's... That will be those who have loved him and who have served him their entire lives. Those who have surrendered their hearts to him. Those uh, who, have, who have worshipped him in this life. They'll be there bowing their knee and worshipping him. There will also be those who have rejected him. Who have failed and refused to acknowledge his lordship. Who said we will not have this man to rule over us. I, I don't care about that, all that church stuff. And I don't care about all that religious stuff. And I don't need a Jesus. And I don't need a savior. And I don't even need God unless I'm in real trouble. And, and, and they rejected him completely. They will be bowing their knee and worshiping him too on that day. The Bible says every knee, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Every soul, friends, every single soul. John the Revelator said uh, that in the future, in heaven, he saw, he said that he saw out people bowing thousands upon thousands and ten thousands of thousands. And he said they're all bowing before the Lord and they're all worshiping him out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. The whole world. Everyone who's ever lived will bow and worship Jesus Christ. That's who he is. So the crowds are shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. The crowd, part of the crowd is saying, who is this man? They came for something. They came to receive their, their own blessing, their own miracle. Or, or they came for, for independence from Rome. But they all, they all came for themselves. Jesus, when he rides into the city, he, he sees the first glimpse he, coming around the Mount of Olives, uh, around the mountain and uh, on the road, all of a sudden the whole city opens up before him. He sees the entire city of Jerusalem. He sees all the festivities. He, he hears the crowd shouting, Hosanna. He sees all of this. And the Bible says that he stopped and he wept over the city. Now, there's another time in the Bible where Jesus wept. The Bible says that he wept at the graveside of his friend Lazarus. And in that context, the word wept means that he sobbed quietly. He, was, he felt emotion for the loss of his friend. He's about to raise him from the dead, but he felt the emotion when he saw the sisters and they're grieving over their, the loss of their, their, their brother. And There's a lot of other things that are involved in that weeping, but it was a quiet weep, not here. When he comes to Jerusalem on that day and he looks out over the city, the Bible says that he wept, he wailed, he cried out loud. It was from deep within a passionate cry 
Have you ever wept so hard that you shouted, that you cried out loud? This is the, cry, this is the weeping when he sees the city and he wails in deep passion over the city of Jerusalem. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. If you had only known, if you could only see, if you only understood the peace that is yours, what is happening here today? You're shouting Hosanna if you only understood, but you don't. And he wept over what was going to happen. They were, about, they were going to reject him. And he knew that, and he wept. They didn't understand. Listen, he said, if you had only known the things which belong unto thy peace. He came to bring them peace. He came to bring them peace. The peace that they needed. Listen, friends, the, the Bible says that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, Isaiah is prophesying the birth of this King, the birth of Christ, the birth of the Messiah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Are you with me? Yeah. Let me just, I, I, I know this is for someone. Maybe, maybe it's for someone watching this on television. I don't know, but I know that this is for someone. Listen to me. Isaiah said that he would come, he would be a Prince of Peace. Do you know him as the Prince of Peace? Do you know him as one who brings peace? Isaiah, a psalmist said, the Lord will give peace strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Isaiah again said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Listen, do you know him? For, are, are you in perfect peace, complete peace? Because your mind is stayed on him, because you keep your mind on him. Uh, do you know him in that way? John said, these things have I, Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Listen, in this world you're, you shall have tribulation. Jesus is our peace. Our peace is in Christ alone. Listen. He's come to bring peace, peace with God, peace to restore us. Listen, we, our sin has made us enmities, at enmity with God, made us enemies of God. We have rejected him. Adam walked with God in the, in the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden, but he rebelled. He rejected God, uh, God's lordship, and, and sin came, and, and, and since then, man has been separated from God. Christ has come, Jesus has come to restore that relation, that there might be peace with God. No longer guilt, no longer fear of hell. Are you afraid to face God one day? This is gone, friends. Jesus Christ has come to restore us into a relationship with the Father. He came to bring peace with one another. Listen, he came to bring unity amongst people. Oh God, how desperately we need unity today. Listen to me, the Jews and the Gentiles were, were at odds with each other. Never the twain should meet, but Christ came. And the Bible says that he tore down every wall of separation, and he made all flesh one, all people one flesh. Whether they're Gentiles or Jews, every creed, every color, every, every uh, uh, nationality, God has come to make us one. We are supposed to be one. This world is so divided over stupidity, over nonsense, race divisions. That is the most stupid, the stupidest thing I ever heard, that there would be racial division. What, do you, what makes one person any different than the other? Amen. The color of one's skin? 
Well, if you're dying and you need a blood transfusion, you're not going to stop and ask, well, what color skin was this? did this blood come from? Idiot. He made us one. He brought peace. In Christ, there is peace. Peace with one another. Peace in a world of turmoil. Friends, in this world, Jesus said, ye shall have tribulation. You're going to have tribulation. We live in paradise lost. We live east of Eden, or south of Eden, or somewhere. We're not in Eden. It ain't Kansas anymore. All that we know, all, that's all gone. We live in a world of tribulation. We live in a world of woe. And Jesus said it would be so. Listen, friends, if anybody has ever told you that if you come to Christ or, or you profess that you know God, that all of your problems are going to go away. And if you just claim it, God will give you whatever you need and you're going to be just fine in every aspect of your... They lied to you. Jesus never said that. He never gave us such a promise. He said, you're going to have tribulation. Listen, my friend, I, I know, I, I'm, I'm so aware of, of tribulation and heartache that people are facing today. I, the past few weeks, I've been to several funerals. I had a dear friend from Bible college, he's a godly man, a good pastor, a good man of God, solid and, 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 and committed and faithful. Just buried his 32-year-old daughter on Friday who was killed, violently killed in Las Vegas. I've, I, I know people that are suffering in, in physical, they, they need a healing, they need to be, I, I understand, you're not alone is what I'm saying, you're not alone. And God hasn't forgotten about you. you. But he said, you're going to have tribulation. And I've been to the hospital how many times in the past few weeks, visiting people who, listen, you're not alone. This is the world in which we live. It is a fallen world. In this world, you shall have tribulation. But Christ said, be of good cheer. I've come. I've come and I've overcome the world. In Christ, we could have peace. Listen, Adam Savage from uh, Mythbusters, you familiar with that show? He, he'd say, I, I reject your reality and I substitute my own. <laughs> you could do that. You could reject this reality and you could substitute your own. And you, and you could say, no, everything is going to be uh, different. I, 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 don't, I don't believe in all that. That's false preaching and you're a negative preacher and a doomsday preacher and you don't have any faith. And I just claim whatever. I, well, you could reject the reality, friends. It doesn't change the facts one bit. It's a fallen world. It's a world of tribulation. And that's what Jesus said it was. He said you're going to have tribulation. The word tribulation, the basic meaning is pressure. You feel it? You feel it? You feeling it? In this world, you're going to have pressure. In other words, it's, it's translated in another place, afflictions. In this world, you're going to have afflictions. In this world, you're going to be afflicted. There's going to be pressures. There's going to be sorrow. There's going to be heartache. There's going to be loss. We live in a fallen world. But in Christ, we could have peace in the midst of this. Are you with me? If you know him, if you, if you trust him, if your mind is stayed on him, if your thoughts are about him, if your hope is in him, if you say, God, I don't understand what this is all about. I don't know why this is happening, and I don't know how to get out of it, and I don't know what to do, but I trust you, Lord. My mind is on you. My hope is in you. My trust is in you. Then the Bible says he'll keep you in perfect peace. In complete peace. He said that you're, you'll have peace that passes understanding. In other words, you won't, it won't make any sense to you why there's peace, but there's peace. Because you have Christ, because he's the center of your life, because, you, because he's your Lord and Savior and Redeemer. And... Amen. Listen, it didn't have to be so. For the, for, that, for the world, Jesus came and he came into a world of discouragement. He came into a wor world of sin. And, and uh, listen, it didn't have to be that way. 
Jesus stood there. He said, if you had only known this day the things that belong to you, if you had only known this day, listen, friends, that, that's a very specific day that he's making reference to. Gabriel, the angel, had told Daniel in the book of Daniel to the very day that Christ would come riding in to, into Jerusalem to, to present himself as Messiah. Gabriel had said to Daniel, in other words, mark your calendar. Put this on the calendar. From, from the decree to rebuild the temple a certain number of days, years, until that day when Messiah comes. It, you could put it on your calendar. You could mark this in your calendar. It was the very day, specific day, that Gabriel had said that the Messiah was going to come and present himself. And, and that's why Jesus said, if you had only known this day, this is the day that that Gabriel had said to Daniel, this is the day that the prophets had known about. How did you miss it? If you had only known, and our Psalm 118 that we're, that, we're, that we're using, the Psalm that was sung, listen to this. Psalm 118, verse 24, what does it say? This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Do you see the irony? Here is the song that they're singing. Hosanna! Hosanna to the son of David! Hosanna in the highest! He saves! God save us! This is the day that the Lord hath made. We're going to rejoice in it. This day! The very song that proclaimed his coming, that prophesied his coming, was the very song that also said they would reject him. The stone that the builders rejected. They, they missed it. They were singing, this is the day, and they had no idea what that day was. Missed it completely. God, in verse 27, the Bible says, in this song of praise, God is the Lord which hath showed us light. God is the, <laughs> Hosanna, God is the one who showed us light. Paul said, who hath delivered us, speaking of Christ, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Paul said, he is the light indeed. He is the light of the world. And he's come to deliver us from darkness into light, into the light of Messiah's kingdom. Jesus said, in there, this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil, John said. The light has come. They're singing about the light coming, but men don't want the light because their deeds are evil, and so they, they stay in darkness and they reject the light for the sake of their darkness. Friends, it, doesn't, it didn't have to be so in that day, and it doesn't have to be so today. Are you with me? You still here? Give me a few more minutes. It, di it doesn't have to be so today. If you only knew, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. If you only knew the peace you could have right now. If you only knew the peace that you could have right now. Pastor, what do you have, a magic wand? No, I don't have a magic wand. I don't have a silver bullet. I don't have a magical incantation. I have no, I've got nothing. I, I got nothing that I could offer you that will change all of your problems. If I did, friends, I would do it. I would give it to you, free of charge. I'm not saying that all of your problems are going to go away. As, as I said a moment ago, some of the most godly people I have ever known in my life have been people who have suffered the most. I'm telling you, some of the most godly people have the hardest sorrows and hardest heartaches of all. Listen, but they, but they were able to face it in peace. They were able to face it and have the peace of God, the peace that passes understanding, because they knew their hope was in Christ and He was their peace. Listen, the only way to have peace is to see Jesus in everything. To have your mind stayed on Him. 
Listen, friends. If you think it's been bad now, it's going to get worse. If you think it's been bad up to this point, it's going to, it's going to get worse. Pastor, that's why the church won't grow. Well, at least you know the truth. It's going to get worse. Listen, friends, I, I see it every day. I, I, I watch the news. I, I understand the political battles that people are in. Listen, I vote and I encourage you to vote. And there are things that you stand upon because they are purpose, because there's purpose and, and, and uh, God hates injustice. So you stand for justice. I stand for justice as well. But I'll tell you this, my friend, the political battles will suck every bit of peace out of you. It'll rob you of the peace that God has given. He doesn't want you to be all troubled every day about political matters. Friends, it's not going to change a thing. The prince of the powers of the air, Jesus told us these things would happen. And, you, and so we get so caught up in all the politics, and you, you have no peace. It'll rob you of your peace. All the financial problems. Uh, where's the stock market today? I don't know. Listen, God still knows. So you're, if, you worry, if you worry about what's going to happen with your finances, if you're, if you're so concerned about, about tomorrow that you don't have peace, you don't know him. Or, or you haven't put your trust in him. Your mind isn't on him. He'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And as far as finances, listen, God knows, God knows where the fish are that have gold coins in their mouth. If you're, if you're not familiar with the reference, this, Jesus and the disciples needed to pay taxes and there wasn't any money. Jesus said, go down to the water and catch a fish. And the first fish you catch, there'll be enough money in its mouth, a gold coin and... Don't, don't look at me like that. We've caught fish before with, with all kinds of things in their mouths and stomach. Fish strike at, you know, bear can lids, anything that flashes in the water. So, but God did it. He prepared the fish. God knows where the fish I haven't caught one of those. <laughs> but God knows where the fish are that have coins in their mouth. God, God knows... He took a lad's lunch and multiplied it to feed the, the multitudes. God knows how to fill your cabinet. He knows how to re fill your refrigerator with food. He, he hasn't lost the recipe for manna. Remember in the wilderness, morning and night, they went out, angel food, bread from heaven to feed for 40 years. They didn't miss a meal. God still has the recipe. He knows the recipe for manna. God will provide for you. I don't know how, but I know that he will. Don't fear. If, we, if your mind is on him, if your hope is in him, he's going to take care of you, whatever it is. What, what you're going through now or what's coming. Listen, David said, I was young, and now I am old. I can say that now. I was young, and now I'm old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. David said, I know. My whole life I have proven this thing, that God is faithful. And the righteous, those who trust in him, he has provided for them and, and never, and, their, and nor will their children be begging bread. God is going to provide. That's his promise to us, friends. It doesn't have to be. All the, all the, the tribulation and sorrow, it doesn't have to be. Friends, these are very difficult days for many people. I won't be. I refuse to be a proverbial sunshine pump. I'm not going to stand here and tell you everything's coming up roses and, and all you got to do is put your hope in Christ and everything is going to be fine. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you the truth. I can only tell you that things are actually going to get worse. But I can promise you this. I could promise you the presence of God if you put your hope and trust in him. I could promise you that he will keep you in perfect peace. I could promise you that he is going to provide for you. I don't know how. And I don't know where. And you scratch your head and you say, I just need a little bit. I'm doing my best and I just can't seem to make ends meet. And I don't know how it's going to come. Well, go check your backyard. Maybe there's a raven dropping something in your backyard. I don't know. God's going to provide. That's what he said he would do. When we learn to trust him in that way, friends, then he's going to... You, you with me? Listen. 
I'm not going to be a proverbial sunshine pump, but I will remind you that the sun is always shining. It's a good day today. It's a beautiful day. The sun is out. It's a little warm. Warm in here. At least I'm warm up here. Beautiful sunny day, but I'll tell you, yesterday wasn't so... The day before was worse, and they're, they're getting snow in parts of our state, uh, parts of our country today. Blizzards a couple days ago in April. I, listen, the sun isn't always, you, you, it may be a cloudy day, and maybe sometimes that's all you see. Maybe all you see is the clouds. But I promise you, friends, the sun is still shining. And God has promised sunshine. Malachi chapter 4 Verse 2, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness, notice the spelling, the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow as calves of the stall. In the, in the midst of your clouds, in the midst of your storm, in the, in the thunder and in the rain, the son of righteousness. God likens himself to the sun. He says, I'll, I'll shine sunlight into the midst of your darkness. In the midst of your storm, you'll get sunshine. And the calves, see, in the New King James Version, he says, you'll grow fat like the stall-fed calves. See, you're going to be spoiled. I'll, I'm going to spoil you. I, I know i got to move along. I'm sorry. I, I just know that this message is... Whatever. This is the sacrifice, friends. This is Passover. They've come to celebrate. The crowds are shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus said, if you had only known what you're saying, if you had only understood what this day is and the peace that I came to bring, but you missed it, you rejected it, you... And then it says in this very psalm that they're singing, bind the sacrifice with cords. It's part of their celebration. We're going to praise the Lord. Bind the sacrifice. This, friends, that Je the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem was the lamb selection day. The day that the families gathered and selected their lamb for the Passover, Passover feast at the end of the week. This was the day traditionally, that the Jews would go and select the lamb, the lamb that was going to be eaten, the lamb that was going to be sacrificed for the Passover feast. This was the beginning of the Passover celebration. Each family would select their Paschal lamb for the feast. It needed to be without blemish, Exodus chapter 12, verse 5. They needed to select a lamb that was not spotted, was not blemished, no broken bones, no, no imperfections. It needed to be perfect. The perfect lamb for the Passover, the perfect Paschal lamb. Each family would look forward to the feast. It was a time of, of unity. It was a time the whole family would gather under one roof to eat the lamb. The whole family came and partook of the lamb. It was a, a great time of family unity. Imagine that. It was a time of reflection. They would purge the house of leaven. Leaven represents sin. It was a time when they would go through the house and they would get rid of all the stuff in the house that was displeasing to God. They would reflect upon their lives. Is there anything here that God does, that doesn't honor God? I'll, I'll get rid of it. It was a time of reflection. And it was a time of great celebration. They were celebrating deliverance from oppression, deliverance from Egypt. All of these things were on the minds of those that came that day as they selected the lamb for the sacrifice. Jesus, friends, is our Paschal Lamb. He's the perfect, sinless Lamb of God. John, when he saw Jesus coming, he said, that On the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John, early on, had seen Jesus when he first came into his ministry and, and acknowledged him. This is the Lamb. This is the Lamb of God. Paul said, purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Jesus is the Passover lamb, the perfect lamb without spot, or without blemish. Bind the sacrifice with cords. We know Jesus would be bound and led away ultimately to his crucifixion at the end of the week. 
Right now they're shouting Hosanna. Right now they're saying honor to the king. Hail king, the Messiah has come. Save us. Later that week they're going to bind him and drag him away to be killed, crucified. The spotless lamb of God was indeed the sacrifice for mankind. Have you come to worship him today? Stop for a moment. Have you come to worship him? Did you come today to say, my God, I, I come into your house to give you all glory. Everything stops today, Lord, as I, as I come to your house to worship you, to acknowledge you as Lord of my life and Savior of my soul. You're the king of everything. Everything I have is yours, Lord God. Everything I own is yours. Everything I ever will have or be comes from you. I come, Lord, to give you that glory, to honor you. Have you done? Do you know him? Let me ask this question. Do you know him? I'm not asking you, are you mentally familiar with the biblical character called Jesus? I'm not asking you that. I'm not asking, did you ever say the sinner's prayer? I'm not asking you that. Do you know him as Lord? Do you know him as worthy? Do you know him as the Lord of glory? Do you know him as the one who deserves all worship? Do you know him as the Prince of Peace? In this world, you shall have tribulation. The psalmist said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He's a very real, very present, always present help to those, listen, but only to those who come to him and trust. Psalm 62, 8, trust in him at all times, ye people. Let me say that again. I know, uh, uh, Pastor, you're, you're too long-winded today. But listen, trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. He's a refuge to those who trust him at all times and he brings us peace and keeps us in perfect peace listen you may be able to live without him maybe you're here this morning or you're watching this well here the, this afternoon by now and you, you and you've made a pretty good go at it you say well i've lived this far without him how's that working for you Really, I mean, how's that working for you? When you get in trouble, do you, know, do you know him as one who brings peace in the midst of that? Or... But you must, you, may, you, could, you might live without him, but you most certainly cannot die without him. You can't face the Father without Christ. He is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Palm Sunday. Hosanna. We know the miracle worker. He, we, we've seen him open blind eyes. We've seen him multiply the loaves and the fish. Maybe he'll do something for me today. Maybe he'll touch me. Maybe he'll bless me. I'll follow him. Hosanna, king. Maybe I'll get something. Political, uh, 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 we're, we're under the tyranny of Rome. Maybe, Hosanna, maybe he's coming to rescue us and we'll, and we'll go back to having our nice little Israel. Uh, Hosanna. They had no idea. He said, if you had only known who I am, if you had only, I, the angel Gabriel came and told you, mark it on your calendar, be watching for the Messiah. It's all right there. And you even sing, this is the day the Lord has made. And you have, and still you're, you missed it. If you had only known the peace that has come to you today. My friend, as I stand here and as I close this, if you, ha if you could only know the peace that could be yours today, if you could only know the peace, who he is, and what he's done, and what he's promised, and what he will do for you, if you could only grasp that today, and acknowledge him, and surrender your all to him, and say, you are Lord of my life. If you could only know the peace, friends, that passes understanding. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, God, for your word. I, I thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. I, I thank you, Lord, for this word that you've given this morning. And I pray, God, that, it is, that it's done what you have 
intended it to do. God, I know, Lord, that you've given it to me. I know, Lord, that you have someone or, or ones in mind, that somebody has heard this. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that it would, that it would do the work that you've intended. That someone would hear and, and realize, Lord, that they have missed it right along. Who is this man? They didn't, they didn't know you. They don't know you. They don't know you, God, as Lord. I pray, Father, today that their lives would be changed. I ask you, God, that they would be softened in heart, that they would surrender to you, and, and God, that they can know the peace that passes understanding, that you can save their soul and change their lives, and, and most of all, God, that you will be glorified in those lives. We ask this today, Father, that you might receive the honor and the glory. Hosanna, you are our Savior. You are our King. We worship you this morning, God. We worship you today. Let your will be done, Lord God, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.